And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. The Mighty Mighty Oak, final T-Rex 5 winners, and new Nam is hot, hot, hot. You're at the place, it's Pensado's place. Hey everybody, thanks for dropping by. Uh, the excitement is building. Can't wait to see you guys in a few days. Uh, it's not, not that far out, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, um, it's go, you know, as you always say, these things come quicker than you think. Oh my God, and it's right on top of us. Shall we get to Let's it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey gang, always great to be with you. Uh, our partners, they are great as well. They would be 1500 or nothing. Yeah. The Blackbird Academy. Yep. Westlake Pro, yes. Avid, yes. Nam, yes. Heaviosity, yes. Groove 3, Ooh. and Fab Factory. Ooh. As we alluded to just a second ago, Nam is on fire. Now that's not fire, that's fire, which is extra fire. Um, January 25th through the 28th, we want you to be there. It's a fantastic place to network, see the latest in gear, get educated, and actually just have an audio blast. Plus. Dave and I'd like to see you. We'll be there yeah, live sure. twice a day, Thursday through Saturday. Here's the breakdown. Attention, please get out your note cards. Uh, from 1 to 2, midday at the Avid booth, and from 4 to 6 in the afternoon uh, at something we've called Nam Jam, Dave and I will be at that broadcasting live both times. Where is that? It's in the new Anaheim Convention Center North building. The Avid interviews will be on the first floor from 1 to 2, as I said, and then Nam Jam will be on the second floor at the live stream hub. Here are the lineups, the Avid lineup. On Thursday, the producers of Despacito, Mauricio Rengifo and Andreas Torres. On Friday, Ariel Bergeau and Luis Hernandez, who's the CEO of Avid. And on Saturday, our good buddy, mixer and film score giant, Alan Myerson. Greatest engineer to have ever lived. And Dave just Alan said, Myerson. greatest engineer who ever lived. My uh, hero. And his hero. That's the Avid lineup. Again, from one to two on the first floor of the Anaheim New North Building. Then Nam Jam. What's Nam Jam? Nam Jam's kind of an audio carnival cool down from four to six. It's on the second floor at the live stream hub. It'll be live streamed all over the globe. There's gonna be free gear, prizes, beer, all kinds of stuff. Here's the prizing lineup so far, and it increases every day. Companies like Isotope, Native Instruments, SSL, IK Multimedia, Westlake Pro, Avid, Tascam, by the way, giving away Porta Studios, pretty cool. Very cool. Mog Audio, McDSP, Ooh. the Blackbird Academy, Heaviosity, yeah. I can go on and on, and I will. Yeah. <laughs> Fender, Korg, and a whole bunch more. Yeah that we're gonna give away a bunch of stuff for free. Yeah, it's not just, it's not just software, it's like some expensive stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a real cool lineup of guests, we think, and that's also increasing every day. On Thursday, the incredibly hot Josh Goodwin, his Dua Lipa oh. record, New Rules, I think is top yeah. 10 now. Um, he's got a bunch of stuff, just got a Latin Grammys. We're gonna have a performance by Odd Kid Out on the machine, it's a Native Instrument, very cool device. The Native Instrument's gonna give he's one amazing. of those away, amazing. I hear there's a hot rock band that's gonna stop through for a few minutes. I can't mention it yet. Now Friday gets even hotter with super producers, 1500 or nothing, Bruno Mars and Adele and Justin Timberlake and Sam Smith and so on and so forth. Also producer and engineer, an incredible guy from Maroon 5, Noah Passavoy, he's coming through. We hear Jakir King may stop through, yeah. a whole bunch of our guests. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, it's just a ball. There's gonna be a beer garden on Friday. Our boys at Osberger, Dave has, has sponsored that. Saturday, the same thing with Mog Audio, Cliff and, and his son. Yeah. They're helping us out. Uh, we hear Saturday, Daryl Thorpe is stopping by and Shea Pope is stopping by. And again, all the gear that we described for you. Mm -hmm. Basically, at the end of your day at NAM, come to the live stream hub, hang out, meet some of your heroes, win some stuff. Dave and I want to meet you. We'll interview, we'll do some education stuff, and we'll just hang out and have a ball, it's, it's a, a good thing. Yeah, it's gonna be a good thing. Check your socials for updates. Literally every single day, our phones and emails are going off with other people who wanna come by. Uh, obviously, we wanna see you there. In fact, we wanna see you there so bad, we're making some free badges available to you. It's pretty simple. Go to facebook.com forward slash Punsado's place, enter your information there. Our team will pick some winners each time and get you some badges and you can just come hang out and you don't have to pay. 
How about that? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. damn can be expensive. We really want to see you guys. So watch your socials for updates on more and more guests. Lots of prizing at Nam Jam and the Carnival in the afternoon. Lots of great interviews at the Avid booth midday. We can't wait to see you there. One of the other things we've done is we're wrapping up the IK Multimedia T-Rex 5 contest. Oh, yeah. So let's announce our final winner. So should I drum roll you and you can announce let's the final winner? Ready? Here yeah. we go. The widely worldwide known Jeffrey Poussin. Jeffrey Poussin. Congratulations, yeah, Jeff. Man. We'll get to Congratulations. Get with the folks that will get T-Rex yeah. 5 to you right away. That's I, stuff that you like. That's I love good it. That you like, I right? have been using it. Good stuff. Well, Nam coming up. Man, I can't wait. You know how much I love <laughs> it's, Nam. It's the Super Bowl just, for just, you. Just, if you see one of our sponsors, the odds are I'm going to be hanging out at their booth at some point during Nam. So yeah, come by the booths and check, and I'll be there sometime at some point. But you're I'll definitely a, be you're, it. You're at a couple of booths, right? Yeah, I came multimedia on Friday morning, and then um, uh, Pro Audio Design Ausberger booth uh, Saturday. Right. Afternoon. Are you doing the DSP? I'll we'll try and get by and see Colin. Okay. It, it, it's As you tough. know, yeah, we we we, we filled it up this year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll see you at Nam. Yeah, a super hot producer. We've been after him for a minute. A nominee for Pensado Awards, uh, records all over the chart. Mentoring friends of ours that we know we'll talk to him about. We are pleased to welcome to the desk the one, the only. Oak Felder. Hello. Happy, man. Hello. How are you doing, man? Good to have you, man. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's yeah. our absolute yeah. pleasure. Speaking of mentoring, uh, somebody that we think very highly of, spoke very highly of the way you took care of him as he was making his transition out here, which is Cosign. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cosign. Yeah. Real good friend of mine. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we love Cosign. We think Great he's guy. brilliant. Brilliant, talented. Extremely talented. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very cool guy. He told us there were many a time when he was sorting through how he got where he needed to get to in his career. He'd end up on your couch, and you would talk him through it, all the stuff. All the time. Well, his studio was um, right across the walkway from mine because when I first moved to Los Angeles, um, another mutual friend, a guy named Harvey Mason, was sure. nice enough to let me use one of the studios in his compound in sure. North Hollywood. And, and, that and co-sign as, as you know, one half of the interns, also had a room in that building. Yeah. So we kind of hit it off there. Um, and man, he would always like walk over to my, I'm, I'm an avid Logic user, so he would come over to my studio and at first it started off with him just asking me about, you know, Logic tips and sure. how do I do this and how do I do that? And then, you know, eventually it just sort of evolved into like career advice, I guess. Yeah, so very intelligent brother. I like, I like sure Colson. I like he's really intelligent. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Can you describe, I, I'm curious about this because we've known each other a long time. Yeah. That period, that little microscopic period where you didn't know if you were good enough and then transitioning to thinking, wow, I can really do this. How, how did that happen and, that, and describe that feeling in that period? Dave, I'm going to be totally honest and people think I'm BSing when I say this, but I haven't transitioned to that point yet of I think I'm good enough because I look around at all my peers and I look at what everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like it's better than anything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people out here that suck. And I'm better than them, at least. Right? <laughs> at least you know that. <laughs> at least yeah. I know that part of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I myself have the philosophy that you, you never really are better than anyone because at any moment, anybody could have a better idea than you've ever had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I try to impart that to the guys that I have under me as well. Like mm -hmm. You kind of have to keep that mentality. It's a weird form of ambition you have because you were happy to be in Turkey where you grew up and were born. Yes, sir. But yet... You came over here. What, what was that? Uh, I'm trying to figure out, like, are you a hippie or are you not a hippie? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, no. No, I'm not, I'm not a hippie. Um, I came here to go to school. I, I, I came here for college. I oh, came so here. you didn't, didn't come for music? Yeah, it wasn't even for music. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Music sort of was an accident for me. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm a realist. You know that about me. I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. uh, and while I was in college in Atlanta, I went to Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the lesser known schools. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. In the it's, ACC, it's there's some better ones you there can are mention. Some, there there yeah. are some. Actually, I'm not allowed to ever say that there is a better school than Georgia Tech. So. Well, I'll do it for you, Clemson is. Oh my goodness, you and I, you and I after the show. <laughs> no, um, by audio uh, fight. I know, right? Anybody want to take that? When was the last time Georgia Tech was in the national final? Oh, there you, you go with that. There you go with that. <laughs> See that? <laughs> it takes a person from South Florida. Anyway, oh, okay. So, so. I grew up in a recording studio. I was around it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, loved music, obviously, but was sort of always realistic 
enough to know that getting into the music industry was like, you know, a camel getting through the eye of a needle. Mm-hmm. It was very difficult, right? Mm-hmm. So rather than, I always say, rather than try to win the lottery, I was a guy that tried to sell the lottery ticket ah. to the ones who were trying oh, to win the lottery, cool. right? So I built a studio just as a hobby mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to sort of record people that had the dream. Mm-hmm. I happened to record one guy uh, who's still a really good friend of mine today, a guy named Sterling Sims. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I, I'll be damned if not a month later after we did his demo, he called me and said, hey, do you want to meet L.A. Reed?" And I was like, sure. Yeah, absolutely, why not? And uh, I went up to New York and I met L.A. Reed, and he told me how much I could sell each track for, and I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. How much? <laughs> <laughs> you said, mm. There might be something to look into yeah. there. I need to check this out for myself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just sort of made the transition from there. So I, I credit Sterling for, for sort of being my catalyst for getting into the music industry. The, the lane that you, and I, I, if I get it wrong, please correct me, yeah. that you seem to have created for yourself mm. are finely crafted pop hits with vocalists really doing real vocals on those records oh, and yeah. so so forth. Absolutely. Is that partly your space, what you like listening to? Is that just what, because you've had success, people are calling you about? Um, I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say mm-hmm. that that's the case because, uh, you know, music takes many forms. Like music, musical, music is like people. Yeah. And there are some very well put together, refined gentlemen walking around mm-hmm. and they're you know, sloppy people who Mm -hmm. are really good at spelling, like just random things. Like Mm -hmm. music is random in that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've had success being very meticulous with vocalists Mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. Name some of them. Um, Kehlani being one of, she's one of my favorite singers. Mm -hmm. Demi Lovato being an obvious one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alessia Cara, who has one of the most amazing tones. Mm -hmm. Usher, Usher Raymond being Mm -hmm. another one. Mm -hmm. Chris Brown being another one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love his voice. He's got such a commercial voice. He's Super amazing. commercial. Yeah. And he's such an acrobat with his voice. The yeah. guy just flips for days. I love it. I don't know. I could, I could keep no, going. That's, that's Are fun. you a good singer? Uh, you know what, Dave? I sing well enough to do vocal production. People ask me if I sing, and, and you do. people tell me I can. We heard you uh, singing before yeah, the show I, started. I wish I could sing. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been somebody. Get out of here, Dave. No, I'm serious. I oh wish I could have been. He's a good singer. No, uh, hey, yeah. Uh, no. We should start a trio, the oh, three of us. No, no seriously, three-part harmony. Uh, be amazing. There you go. Mudbone and the Rascals. There you go. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so in your creative process, the songwriting part, let's talk about that first. Of course. Where are you in that thing? Are you involved in it? Are you writing these things? Are you a collaborator, co-writer? How does it fall? Well, I believe that the, that the modern responsibility of a, of a record producer uh-huh is to supervise the creation of a song from its initial conception to its final mix. Mm, That's deep. And there are producers that jump in any way along in in that process, jump in. I prefer to be there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, Not for any need to realize my own vision, but for the need. Yes, it is. Well, I mean, that kind of happens. Yeah. That happens anyway. Yeah. But you, as a mixing engineer, Dave, you know People walk in with a vision, yeah. and you get a big kick out of helping people realize their vision. Yeah, Even sure. parts of it that they might not have been aware of to begin with. For sure. I don't know about that, but yeah, I like, I like a clear vision. It's just so much more fun to mix. It is. It's, it's, it's fun to work on yeah. as a producer as well. Yeah. So when, a, when an artist comes in the room, and you know, a lot of times it starts as a human conversation. Yeah. This is what I went through. This is what happened to me. You know what? I read a story about Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and how about how they crafted her first project. Mm-hmm. And they spent days and days and days not even working. Like, mm-hmm. they weren't even working. They were sitting down talking to Janet right. about what she was going through yep. and how she wanted more control over her own career. Boom. And then they did control. Right. You know what I mean? Like, they understood yeah. where she was coming from. They mm-hmm. drew her experiences out mm-hmm. and put it into the music. Mm-hmm. I think that's the role of a producer. Yeah. And I try as hard as I can to be as be as hands-on in that process so that I can help the artist achieve their own vision. What's interesting about your perspective is that is what producers in a generation or so, that was the job. Yeah. They were really directors. For sure. Kind of. So you're directing all these, you got your DP and you got your, you know, you're making sure the lens is focused and the makeup is right and all the, 
and you stood in the control room and kind of conducted the orchestra right. and wherever it may be, maybe in writing, maybe recording, maybe mixing. Right. <clears throat> and I think in today's world, what we've noticed from the show, and we talk about it all the time, is that today's creators are often hybrids. You're a producer and you're a mixer and you're a songwriter and you have to work with people who do that. And you have to have somebody who gives some, provides some lanes and some guidance yeah. to get through it all so it gets to the point where it, it makes sense. So I think, I think it's amazing that as a lesson to our audience, how that can really work for you yeah. in ways where you stay mm-hmm. true to who yourself, you utilize all your skills, but you also can have really great Success. So, Very true. Hat, you know, hats off to you. I appreciate that. Also, too, Oak, um, like you're known to have a great bedside manner. What's a bedside manner? Well, the way he acts and reacts with his with the artist he's working with. Lay some knowledge on us about how you pull things out of an artist they might not think that they could do because you're you're really good at that. Like if you listen to Sorry Not Sorry, that performance is been guided and shepherded by you. I can hear it. Thank you, man. And, and sure. do you create an atmosphere in the studio? Is it like you're a very calming person just naturally, you know? And, and you're really, well, thanks for saying that, you're really a big guy, so you're intimidating, <laughs> and, and, but yet you're a gentle giant. And do all those personality traits help you pull things out of an artist and give me some techniques and how to do that myself? You know what? Absolutely. It is, it is important, I think, to have what I call a board side manner where you kind of understand the psychology of the artist you're working with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Demi was somebody who I didn't think was going to open up to me very quickly mm-hmm. because, I mean, she's a, she's a superstar and she has so many people already trying to vie for that personal space. Right. Mm-hmm. So naturally in that situation, you're going to be a little, you know, you're going to be a little defensive. And I did try to use aspects of being the friendliest person I possibly could. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it worked in so many different ways because now I count her amongst my friends. Like she's she's such a great person and she's somebody I go back and forth with every once in a while. And you know, she tells me when things I do are bad ideas. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It works the other way too. I was doing a song with with Brandy, mm-hmm. one of the greatest vocalists. Absolutely. No question. No question. I mean the vocal bible, right? Yeah. And man, she went in the booth and she started singing this song, but it was so she had such a whispery quality to the way that she was singing it, which, you know, she's, she's done that before. Right. She puts a lot of air through her lungs. She does. Lungs. A lot of, exactly. And, and it creates a specific tone that she's yeah. kind of known for. Yeah. The problem with that is that it didn't fit the anger of the song. Uh-huh. I said to her, I need you to sing this record. Right. S-A-A-N-G. Yeah, S-A-N-G. Yeah. I need you to sing this shit. Oh, sorry, shit, can I curse? No, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I need, need you to, this is what I said. Mm-hmm. I need you to sing this shit. Yeah. And, you know, she hesitated at first because... Well, to be honest with you, I don't know why she hesitated. So mm-hmm. I got up, I packed my bag, and I got in my car, and I drove away. Mm-hmm. Damn. And she calls me about 10 minutes later after she realized I had left, and she said, did you leave? <laughs> and I go, well, yeah. yeah. And she's like, why? I'm like, I can't record this record on you if you're not going to sing it like you pissed. Right. Uh-huh. Right. She said, bring your ass back to the studio. You're not going to leave now on Herb and I, are you? I'm sorry? You're not going to leave on Herb and I, are you? <laughs> oh, no, no. Just going to walk away. <laughs> it's like, well, see y'all later. You no. need to interview. <laughs> bring I don't that like interview. that stupid question, out. Dave. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I came back. I sat down. She didn't say a word to me. She went in the booth. And killed it. My God. Oh, my God. It's a song called Begging and Pleading. It's one of my favorite songs that I've ever done. Oh, wow. My goodness. One of the greatest vocal performances I've ever captured. Wow. Right up there with Demi's. Wow. Well, how the hook with Demi, the hook that she sings on Sorry Not Sorry, that's one of my favorite things she's ever done. How'd you get that out of her? Oh, she she was feeling it. Uh, she was feeling it because because the concept, the concept of it, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to take a lot of credit for her vocal performance that day, and I'm going to tell you why. Because uh, she really connected with the concept of the song. Mm. Here's somebody who is torn apart, analyzed, criticized, constantly, 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 and, mm-hmm. and, said, and, and, and const- constantly said to this individual, well, what you're doing is wrong, mm-hmm. and, and you need to be apologetic. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened that morning, my wife and I were having a difficult conversation 
I won't call it an argument because I never win arguments with my wife. So it was just a difficult conversation. Until your bedside manner only takes you so far. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and so she said something that pissed me off. And I was like, you know what? I think you need to apologize to me for saying that. And she's like, no, I'm not going to apologize. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sorry about mm. not apologizing. Mm. Wow. And then I went, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Publishing. All right. <laughs> well, well, don't say that. Not <laughs> Not <laughs> that way. Yes. I mean, hey, yeah. I give her enough. So hung up the phone, blurted out this concept, and Demi caught on to it right away because, wow. I mean, she has a reason to say, mm -hmm. look, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be apologetic. Right. Mm -hmm. Her vocal performance, I think, came from the fact that she honestly felt it. Right. That's, That's what it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. And, <coughs> and I think it's a, it's important for a producer to be able to learn how to identify, mm -hmm. you know, what concepts and what energies are going to work. And then, you know, in that situation, the work does itself for you. You right. don't have to push right. a lot. Right. It right. just comes out. What oh, do you play? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Not sorry. What do you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. That was pretty cool. That's what awesome. do you play? I play keys. Oh, okay, cool. Piano player. You write on keyboard, you... Uh, not always. Oh, um, sometimes uh, I'll have somebody in the room that plays guitar. Actually, guitar is one of my favorite things to write to. I don't play it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. One of my producers, actually, a guy named Downtown Trevor Brown, is an amazing guitar oh, player as cool. well. Talented so guy. sometimes he lends himself to, oh, cool. to helping us write songs. Cool. Can I ask you some questions about uh, Sorry Not Sorry? Please. Okay. Uh, is it in D major or B minor? I think it's in B minor. I think so, yeah. Why, I think did, it's in was there a purpose for that key? Not specifically. It just um, fit her voice? It just kind of fit the range of where we wanted to go. And that loud ass 808. What was, what was the, um, like when I first heard that song, I'm thinking, damn, this thing's wrong. It's too loud. No such thing. And, 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 <laughs> and then I grew to like it. And, and it, and it kind of enhances the anger that she has for the chorus, you know? Was that conscious? Yes. Say yes. Yeah. Okay, good. For sure, absolutely. But you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to create like this juxtaposition. So on one side of the track, you got this big, ignorant 808 sort of taking up all the space and mm -hmm. being this big, mean bully mm -hmm. in the track. But then there's this harmonic, musical, sort of gospel element mm -hmm. to the song. Definitely, definitely. And um, I like how that flavor combination tastes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 like salt and sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt like she needed to be angry. And what's angrier than an 808? The verse is spectacular, and the chorus is spectacular, but the B section, the pre-chorus, sets up the chorus as good as I've ever heard. You, you, you change the groove a little bit, and then you do some chord changes that kind of get me ready to, to drop that tonic hard with that 808. <laughs> That's brilliant. I appreciate did you that, do that man. consciously, or did that? For did, sure. We wanted to give the crowd something to do. Yeah, that pre-chorus is just claps all the way through it, yeah. right? Quarter we wanted, to, yeah, we kind of wanted to give the audience something to do during that part of the song, uh -huh. sort of in, t in anticipation for what happens during mm -hmm. the hook. You really want people to listen to what happens at the beginning of the chorus, right? Mm -hmm. right. Set it up as well as you can, right? Yeah. right. And Manny put his foot in that mix too. What are and you Chris, saying? Chris oh, mastered yeah. it. Chris did a great job Absolutely. too. Absolutely, Chris Geringer. With the success, but more importantly, with your own intuition as a creative person, do you watch the business? Is the business of the business important to you? Of course, absolutely. It should be, right? Yeah, I think that's, I think, I don't wanna say it's lazy not to do that, but you're better informed the more you're informed. Very true. It helps you make decisions, creative decisions. Well, yeah, of course. It, it, yeah. it helps you make, well, business decisions, creative decisions. I mean, a, a producer is really a hybrid. Yeah. You know, he's a creative, but he's also an executive. Yeah. He understands when business becomes important. You know, one key example of that is, Spotify, mm -hmm. right? So there's this thing in Spotify that says that a stream doesn't count unless it plays for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, as, as terrible as it may sound, that is beginning to inform the way people are sequencing their songs. Of, of course. Whereas, sure. say for instance, back in 2001, especially if you were doing urban music, right. oh, your song is gonna pop off in the club. So you gotta grab everybody before that first five second threshold. Right. That's more psychological, but now Spotify has sort of defined this, you know, well, stream doesn't count unless it's 30 seconds. And so there are people that are putting long intros to yeah. their music. Yeah, of course. It absolutely yeah. does, does affect what you do creatively, for sure. Does the development of artists, is that an interest level of yours? Uh, you know what? No. I'm, I'm more interested in developing other producers and writers, to be uh, honest with you. Gotcha. Um, I've actually taken taken. Um, I've actually been very inspired by Dave. Uh, I've oh, kinda, come on! I'm serious. Is that where your hair came from? That's Is exactly that? right. I yeah, got you. he cool. had a mohawk cool. back cool. in the day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, 
the first time I ever met Dave, it it struck me how much information I was able to get from him by just sitting with Whether him. Whether you wanted minutes. it or not. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, it was stuff that I never forgot. It was stuff that look at where we are. I always kept exactly yeah. that I always kept with me, and I I thought to myself, it's important for a younger generation to know. You know what I mean, and and to Critical. know the stories and to know like. Like, why it's good to know your references in music, you know what I mean? Why it's good to know who Leonard Skinner was, or mm -hmm. why it's good to know who, mm -hmm. any of that stuff. It, it is. It's very important, so. And it's really important for guys like yourself to say that, because it allows folks who are up and coming not to think it's just old people talking to them. Yeah. It's really a definite, a definitive tool that can help make you better by knowing what happened in the past, how you can use it moving forward. For sure, absolutely. Right? <clears throat> like yeah, some people think it's not, it's not cool, but it is super cool. It is absolutely. And it works both ways. Like when we have folks on that have been, that are current and we meet them, information that we impart and impugn from them makes what we do better too. So Very true. that information exchange is, in a, is, you know what's weird? In an economy which is all about sharing information, sometimes too much, Yeah, people will get you know, sort of elitist about the information. Oh, you're too old, or you're not cool enough, or you're not <laughs> in my box, or I know you're lame, and you, you can't really do that. That's no, not really smart. You shouldn't. You absolutely shouldn't. That kind of knowledge is very important, too. I mean, uh, especially from the perspective of a producer who samples a lot. Right. I sample a lot of old music. Mm -hmm. So when somebody hears, I did a record last year for this artist named Lesia Cara, a song mm -hmm. called Here, mm -hmm. which samples an Isaac Hayes song, an nice. old Isaac Hayes that record. That was covered by... Um, Portishead. Portishead, sure yeah. Did. Glory Box, great song. Yeah. Which was my reference for that sample. Uh -huh. um, Pop and I did that together. His reference was Isaac Hayes, and at the time we were both thinking the same thing. He's one of the first people I worked with. Oh my goodness, that must have been amazing. Man. Yeah, he's Hot incredible. Hot Soul was a game changer. Listen. Hot Buttered Soul. Listen so, to Hot Buttered Soul, please. There's so many lessons that are learned when you're a musician, and those lessons go into the music you make. How special is it for me to take all of that information mm -hmm. and package it in a newer artist mm -hmm. so that a younger generation can learn those same lessons? Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, to me, is the penultimate thing that every musician should be doing. Uh -huh. Because that is the tradition of music, passing it from one generation to the next. The griots used to drum. Yeah, there, there, there's That's only exactly right we right forget. Right there's only twelve notes, and 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 repurposing them is is what we have to do as musicians. Right. We have to do it respectfully That's what the show for is. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. information moving it forward. Yeah, exactly. Forward. Well, well, so to well, answer the question, um, I'm more interested in developing producers and writers for that reason. Got it. Got it. What song that you've been listening to? in the last couple of years would surprise me that you listened to it. Would surprise you? Yeah. I don't know, you know me so well, Dave. I don't think anything would surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I know you started out as a grunge guy, but you yeah. only liked grunge music that had melodies, so. For sure. So, it wouldn't surprise me with Portishead or some of the other grunge stuff. Uh, I mean, I listen to everything. I don't know why right? I'm even asking this question. You still want to answer or are you going to leave? Of course I'll let okay, No, go. come on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm out of here, guys. No. <laughs> um, I listened to a lot of rock growing up. Uh, obviously, a lot of grunge music. I mean, I'm, I'm a kid of the home? 90s. Istanbul, Turkey. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was born in Turkey. Yep. Um, so my, my, my exposure to music really came through, like, MTV Europe and... Mm -hmm. You know, going to different festivals in Europe, which was mostly trance or rock, mm -hmm. like Ozfest and all that other good sure. stuff. <laughs> Ozfest. That was sort of my exposure. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really get into urban music like that until I moved to the U.S. And that wasn't until I was 21. What year was that? About? 2001. Wow. I'm kind of glad it happened that way because I was able to gain a perspective on urban music from a non-nostalgic standpoint, mm -hmm. I could kind of analyze it yeah. on its face right. without mm -hmm. saying, oh, I remember when I was 12, and, or right. I remember when I was 14. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if a song sucked, but something <clears throat> amazing happened when you were 14 to that song, it's a great oh, song. It's an amazing song. Yeah, yeah. exactly, so. When, when Jason and I first heard your music, it, it, it wasn't like anything, and, and, and that's what I admired the most about it. And he, do you know Nephew? Yeah, of course. He's the same, the same background, and his stuff just took over because both you guys, I think it was an asset. I appreciate that. Yeah. No, I think a fresh perspective yeah. is always. I mean, when we started this, it wasn't that there wasn't audio information out there. Right. 
It was how do you package it and have a new perspective. And exactly. Hopefully you kind of make it entertaining and, and educational. Speaking of education, important, you think, for people to be educated and to learn? For it, sure. It, it's, it's, oh, for sure. We push it a lot because we think it's, it's important. And we also think that you can be educated a number of ways. There's traditional ways of doing things. Yeah. There's non-traditional. There's the way you find it. There's mentoring. There's other kinds yeah. of... But to be uneducated about it is not a smart thing. No, not at all. To do. Correct? I mean, you know, uh, human beings, man, we come from a society that used to be a master apprenticeship kind right. of situation where yep. you learned a trade from somebody and, you know, you learned, you, you know, you were educated. Right. It's so crucial. Yeah. But in, in a lot of the same way, I think mutation is also important. Mm -hmm. So when I teach someone something and they go, well, you know what? This might be a cooler way to do it, Oak. Encourage it. Exactly. And you're Absolutely. like, all right, try it. Let's yeah, see I what agree. happens. I agree completely. Some of, some, of the best, some, of the, some of the best songs we've done in the last year have come from that. Is that right? right? Yeah, wow. for sure. Okay, this is a brand new question I've never asked before. Awesome. Uh, and there's only one right answer, so I'll give you a couple of tries. All right. What's your favorite award you've ever won and why? Uh, I won an Urban Top Producer Award from BMI. That's right. Yeah. 2013. That's exactly right. That's the right answer. 2013. Oh, look, I wrote it down here. <laughs> 2013 <laughs> Top Producer BMI oh, Award. That was the right question. answer. There's, there's, there's another question with the right answer. What's a favorite award that you've been nominated for? Oh, the Pensado Awards. Come on. <laughs> come <laughs> come where on. did that come from? Question. So quick. Are you kidding? Unbelievable. Oh, must man. be the Turkish Indian. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Absolutely. No, I know. I've known that from birth. Trust me. Man. All right, let's see your batter's box here, sir. Oh, man. So um, my expectation is, as he pitches, these are probably going to be home runs, like Aaron Judge. You're All probably right. going to knock these things out of the park. Let's do it. Um, you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Base. Sub. Mm. Not a great answer. Um, virtual sense. Alchemy. Harmonies. I love harmonies. Take six. Ooh. Ooh. He's good, Herm. He is good. Piano. Uh, Bosendorfer. Good and elitist. The pre chorus. And... Sorry, not great sorry. Great piano. Uh, strings. Ron Fair. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I quit. You win. <laughs> Most official battery box answers. Uh, no. <laughs> 808. Oakfelder. Melodies. Max Martin. Reverb. Logic Space Designer. It's amazing. Wow, I'll have to check that out. Hi hats. Pop One's L. Greatest uh, hi hat programmer I've ever worked with. Mm. Oh, your 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 partner, partner Pop. Oh, yeah. yeah, shout out to him, man. Good stuff. Pop. Uh, if your studio caught fire, no, you can't you can't rescue hard drives, computers, wives, livestock. What piece of gear would you rescue? One of my producers, Zaire Koala. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good thing. He's let the others burn. The, the problem is the others. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah the, other one, the other one's screwed. Sorry, Trevor. Um, uh, um, I have a mouse pad. It's a picture of my kids and my wife. I would save that. That's, that's Everything cheating. else can burn to the ground. I mean, that's cheating, Herb. Come uh, on, man. It's, still, it's an honest answer. No, uh, no but Okay, it's... all right. Piece of gear. So I have a Yamaha CP70 in there that if I could carry... I mean, it's, it's heavy it's, as hell. It's, it's like a little baby electric grand, right? The yeah. CP7? Well, it's, I don't know if 300 pounds is baby, unless you're talking about me. Yeah, <laughs> it's little. It's, I mean, it's not a size of a... Yeah, anyway, I no. think I know what you're yeah. talking about. It's, yeah, that's it's, a cool piece of gear. Yeah, that's amazing. They're it's hard awesome. to find now. They are. Okay, so, I concede. He won. Um, <laughs> he won kind of in the first three or four. Well, fair thing. That was brilliant. That was, yeah, it was. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was. Maybe the most unique batter's box answer we've had. I think so, too. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so too. Hopefully, if you're going to NAM, we'll see you there. We can yes. talk about that. Um, you have so much more to give. We also need to have you come back on the show. Of course. So please don't be a stranger. Um, Thank you so and, much for having me. Oh, guys. no, no. And, and let me just say this. Um, your milk and honey guys are excellent. Yes, they are. Uh, I'm a I'm a manager, or have been in my past, and, and Lucas and, and Peter well, and those got guys. One important client left. Uh, I, absolutely, um, the show. <laughs> um, they were excellent. Absolutely, awesome. absolutely. Yeah, I, team couldn't have been more pro. I love Lucas. I love Peter, and I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out to my lifelong lifelong production partner, Donnie Meadows. I love him to death cool. as well. So cool, anyway. cool, cool. TP, take us home. Whew. And I'm I'm sitting here thinking how blessed I am to. To, to have friends like Oak, and, and you might ask from, mu from a musical perspective, why, why would that be? And, and my friendship with him is important to me just because I need a safety net. Sometimes I do stupid things, and I know if he hears it, Sometimes. he would let me know. And um, 
it just gives you a sense of, it's like when you first move to a new town and you're, you're 20 and you don't have any money and you don't know anybody. I don't want that feeling in music and, and Cats Like Oak are the ones that help me not have that feeling. So thank you, my friend. Awesome, man. We'll see you next week. I'll see you now.